going to start this chapter. Bakwas karna ban karo. Alright, so this chapter name is, write down, first write down chapter name, then I tell you what it is. System of particles. So if ever you find, if, if ever you are facing difficulty in physics, this name will come first. System of particles. Okay. So why is this, why students find this chapter difficult? Because there are multiple things here. In this chapter there are like n number of things. So we have this habit as a student, we have this habit of doing everything at the end and just mugging up or trying to do it last minute of the exam preparation. So what happens is that if lot of information is there, you do not understand the link between the information or you do not do enough problem practice, then you will get confused in this chapter which <coughs> concept to apply when. You might be still confused in the other chapter because of lack of problem practice. This chapter will, will add, will double it if you don't pay attention. If you ever miss, let's say, 30 minutes of the class, you're daydreaming about something or someone to back me up so and you don't pay attention, the entire chapter is gone. Because this, this, this is like a chain. Okay, why I am telling you all this? Because see the basic chapters are over now. Basic chapters are there in book one. Kinematics is there, the laws of motion is there, warp energy is there. So these will form up basics. And then here is a chapter, here is a chapter which tells you that till now you have been studying a special case about the motion of an object. For example, you always assume that this as a pen, this just slides forward like this with some acceleration, the entire object has some acceleration and some velocity, it is moving like this. You never considered that while moving it can rotate also, fine. And also you have always considered one mass at a time when you are studying it. For example, whenever you have multiple bar masses and a pulley system, you draw free body diagram of one mass at a time. You draw forces and then you you get the answer and you feel happy about it, right? But then going forward, you are considering multiple particles together. For example, if there are like zillion molecules in this room, you're not going to study one molecule at a time, right? Oh, this molecule is doing now. What this molecule is doing? It becomes senseless. So you need to understand how collective behavior is what as a collection of this entire all the particles what are they doing collectively okay so this is what this chapter tells you and this is closer to the reality basically so we have learned the basics from special cases now we are making it slightly generic fine and when it comes to system of particles each and everything is system of particles this tv itself Multiple point masses you can think of, it, it is made up of multiple small, small, small masses. You can go to the atomic level, the atom is, let's say, smallest particle of this. You can say electron and this thing also. So there are zillions, millions of those particles are there of which the TV is made up of, right? So this is one entire, it may look like a single object, but this is actually a system of particle. But this is a special kind of system of particle. There can be system of particles like this cap and the pen. This is also a system of particle. When I am studying cap and pen together, what I am saying? Two particles I am studying together. So this is also system of particles only. Alright? But they are moving independent of each other. The motions are not linked. But whereas in this television, when this television moves, this point will move along with that point. There is a definite relationship between these two. So their motions are related in some way. So studying this kind of system is easier because knowing the motion of one particle, you can predict the motion of the other particle. But if system of particles have loose particles like this, then you can't predict knowing one particle's motion, 
right? This kind of part system of particle, which doesn't get deformed, or they are depend, they are, there's some relation. This is called a rigid body. Fine. So we are going to study a special kind of system of particle which is a rigid body later on. Right. Right now, I am going to just introduce a concept of system of particle. How to study any system of particle, whether it is a rigid body or collection of particles like this, they are moving independent of each other. Okay. I think we have already started studying the system of particles. Kinetic theory is what we have studied the entire all the gas molecules together what they do, right? So we have already studied the started studying the system of particles. But here we are going to study it uh, in a different way. Okay? We are going to we are trying to apply the Newton's second law of motion. Then we are trying to find out the velocity of the system as a whole and so on okay so this is slightly different but we have already started understanding the system of particles where else have we studied the system of particles as in multiple particles together where have we studied where else huh? where else collisions two particles coming and colliding system of particles here right you have, you have found out the total momentum of the system. What it is? Momentum of entire system. And what is the system? Collection of particles. So we have already studied the system of particles. And fluids, what is fluid? Is it a single particle? No, multiple particles are moving. So even fluid is system of particles. So we have already started studying system of particles. First time we are studying it exclusively. Okay, so when we are studying system of particle exclusively, we are going to assume that we don't know anything. So we will start from the scratch. Fine. So whenever, uh, suppose I have to start study, let's say particle. Like you remember when we studied kinematics, if you would have paid attention. So there, what, what is the first thing we have learned about the particle? What is the first thing about the motion that we should study? It's a point object, so what is the first thing you should notice about that point object to study? Huh? In kinematic there was no force, right? Huh? Rest? No, see that is different, you, you studied velocity and acceleration and displacement but before even you studied velocity, displacement and acceleration, what is the first thing? Hmm? But that is an assumption. How you start studying it? You should first know the location, where it is. If you don't know where it is right now, how you know after some time where it will be? Isn't it? Displacement will just give you what is the movement, how much amount of movement. But if I ask you where it is after 5 hours, you should first ask me where it is right now. Then you tell me what is the velocity. If I just tell you velocity 5 meter per second, tell me where the object will be will ask me where it is right now. Okay? So the first thing about particle which we haven't studied actually systematically is the location. We have assumed that yeah, particle is there. Where it, wherever it is, that is its location. Right? But when it comes to system of particles, there will be multiple particles scattered everywhere. So if I ask you where is the location of the system, it will become a tricky question now. Which location will you tell? Location of the first particle, location of the second particle or the center of the all the particles there has to be some logic to define what will be the location of entire system and you should tell me when I ask you location you should tell me coordinates of a point you can't tell me location of a system is starting from 0, 0 to 2, 0 and 2, 2 and 0, 2 0, 2 over here so you, you can't tell me that, right? Location is a coordinate, right? So first thing we are going to learn here is how to quantify the location of the entire system. Suppose there are multiple masses scattered everywhere. How can I tell you where is the system, right? So please write down location of a system. There is a special name for
for the location of system, it is called center of mass. Have you heard of the center of mass? Right? This is called center of mass. De write down the definition of center of mass. Center of mass, center of mass is a point Center of mass is a point which acts as if, which acts as if, as if entire mass is, as if entire mass is concentrated at that point. That is the way saying that center of mass is the location of the system. Okay? It acts as if entire mass is located there only. Alright? Now tell me, suppose you have one mass here which is 1000 kg and another mass here which is 1 gram. Your system has these two masses, only these two masses. The location of the system will be closer to 1000 kg or closer to 1 gram? Closer to 1000 kg, logical, right? So the location of the system should be closer to the heavier mass. Let's go below, write it down. The location of the system should be closer to the heavier mass. So basically the weightage of heavier mass is more on the location. This is the only chapter which in which I don't follow the NCRT way of arranging the content. Okay, I have my own way of. So don't match it up with okay. Like this we have learned. This we haven't learned. We we'll cover everything when the chapter gets over. Then you can see. And yes, so the location is closer to the heavier mass. So the weightage of heavier mass is more on the location, right? So rather than finding, suppose this is my coordinate axis, this dot is coordinate axis, x and y let us say. And the position vector of this mass is R1 and position vector of that is R2. I am trying to find the position vector of center of mass. Fine. So position vector of center of mass will be the weighted average. So that the position vector comes closer to the heavier mass. So it will be M1 into R1, M2 into R2 divided by M1 plus M2. Okay? Does it make sense? Suppose M1 is very large compared to M2. Automatically R center of mass will be closer to M1 because this term will be negligible. It is like finding the weighted average of the age. Like for example, some of you could be 90 year old, some of you could be 10 year old. But if 10 year olds are, uh, let's say 100 people are 10 year old and only 2 people are 90 year old, the weighted average will be closer to the 10 year old. Same thing, this is weighted average. Have you heard of weighted average before? No. This is the weighted average. Okay. You assign weight. Alright. It is like suppose you have suppose you have one rupee note. So no. You have five one rupee note and you have one hundred rupee note. Total amount of money. What is the total amount of money you have? One into hundred plus five into ten. Right? You, you, you just don't count the number of nodes you have. Similarly here, you are finding the weighted average. The, the weight of the position vector R1 is more. So you are multiplying M1 with it. It's weight. Getting it? So this is the center of mass location and this is for only two particles. <laughs> suppose there are multiple particles. Suppose there are like 10 particles. Then what will be the formula? M1, R1, M2, R2, M3, R3, M4, R4 and so on. Are you getting it? 
So I am writing only for two particles. There can be multiple particles, and there can be infinite particles also. So how do I write the? Do, do you know this this symbol? This summation, summation of M I R I divided by summation of M I. This is the center of mass location. Make sense? Okay. But then this definition of center of mass is in terms of vector, right? It is in terms of vector. Can I write the location of center of mass in terms of x and y coordinates of these particles? So let us try to see whether we can find. Given the x y coordinates of 1000 kg and 1 gram, what will be the x and y coordinate of the center of mass? Okay. So if if I know the position that if the coordinate of a point is x comma y, what will be the position vector? X i cap plus y j cap. Right. So similarly, that is what I do. R C U M vector will be x center of mass i cap plus y center of mass j cap. This will be equal to summation of m i x i i cap plus y i j cap divided by summation of m i. Getting it. So this I can write as summation of m i x i divided by summation of m i i cap plus summation of m i y i divided by summation of m i j cap. So what will be x center of mass? You just equate the i component from left hand side and the y component also. So x center of mass will be what it will be? M1 x1 plus M2 x2 and so on divided by M1 plus M2. Y center of mass will be equal to m1 y1 like this divided by the total mass of the system. Getting it? Is it straightforward? Okay. So you must know what is x center of mass, y center of mass formula because we are going to use this quite often. Okay. Any doubts? <coughs> Do this question. <coughs> this is one kg. 2 kg, 3 kg, 4 kg, 5 kg. Alright? And they are placed on the sides of an imaginary square. Alright? The side length of the square is 1 unit. You need to find out the center of mass of this entire system. <coughs> system has 5 particles. Thank you. 
here, 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 where it should be? Somewhere between 4 and 5 because most amount of mass is around that. So let me take a coordinate axis. This is y axis. This is x axis. What is the coordinate for 4? This is 1 comma 0. This is 1 comma 1. That is and this 0.5 comma 0.5. Simple. So x center of mass. How do you find that? 1 into 0 plus 2 into 1 plus 3 into 1 plus 4 into 0 plus 5 into 0.5 divided by 50 sum of all the masses and similarly YCM YCM will be what? 1 into 1 2 into 1 plus 3 into 0 4 into 0 5 into 0.5 divided by 50 isn't it simple calculation? Yes or no? Okay. Now, can the coordinates or center of mass will be different for different axes you take? If I change the coordinate axis, will the coordinates of center of mass change? Coordinates will change, but the location won't change. The two different things. Location will remain this only. But if your coordinate are this, it will be related to this coordinate. But if you take coordinate axis which passes through this point, originally this point center of mass will become 0, 0. So <coughs> coordinates depends on what coordinate axis you take. But the location, the relative location will be fixed. Any doubts in finding the center of mass? Okay. Now tell me. Tell me what is the assumption we have made when we have considered a system of particles like this. No, it is at rest, correct, but then I can say that they are moving, but right now this is the location. So, huh? Need not be. There are particles placed at different locations. We have not made the assumption that they are rigid body. It could be five different different particles placed at different location. The assumption is that they are all particles, point masses. Are you getting it? What if the five kg mass is a big circle like this, which is which which is not located exactly at 0.5 comma 0.5. It is spread across in a in an area. Then you can't say m. You can't say mass of five uh, five into 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 is not the location of the entire object, right? We have assumed that while applying this formula, we have assumed that all the masses are point masses. What if they are not? Then how the formula will get modified? Let's talk about that. It should come out. Right now, x will be equal to. Now, suppose, shh, suppose your system has two masses. One is point mass of mass m2, and this is a bigger mass of mass m1. Okay? Then I will say that this m1 mass is made up of multiple point masses. I will divide this m1 into different point masses starting from small m1 to small mn. They are the small small masses that are making the bigger mass. Okay? Because the formula I have is for the point mass. I can't apply directly to the bigger mass. So I assume that bigger mass is made up of small small point masses. Getting it? So if that is the case, then x will be equal to the small point mass inside m1 
into location of this small m1. Let's say location of that is x1. If I divide it into small point masses, then I can find out the point masses location. Right? So m1 x1 plus m2 x2 and so on up to mn xn. This will give me summation of mi xi for the entire capital M1. Getting it? And summation of all the small masses will be equal to capital M1 or not? Okay? This plus the second mass is a point mass. M2, let us say, capital X2. This divided by total mass of this M1 plus total mass M2. Getting it? Now, see what I am doing. I am multiplying divide by M1 in the numerator. So, M1 X1, M2 X2 and so on divided by M1 plus M2 plus M2 X2 divided by M1 plus M2. Now tell me, what is uh, the first term in the numerator? This is what? This is the center of mass of the M1. Yes or no? Right, so the formula gets modified to this. M1 into center of mass of M1's location plus M2 into X2 divided by M1 plus M2. This will be total center of mass. So if there is a bigger mass, you multiply the entire mass with its center of mass and location. Got it? Right out. If there are multiple bigger masses, then M1 into its center of mass plus M2 into its center of mass and so on, divided by the total mass of the system. Okay? No doubts, right? Okay, let us... What? Okay? 
So naturally it comes out to be like that. If mass is uniformly distributed, okay, and hence please write down if if there exists a line of symmetry. With respect to the distribution of mass, then the center of mass will lie on the line of symmetry. If you see a line of symmetry, center of mass will be on that line only. Getting it? Okay. What if there are two lines of symmetry? Can two lines of symmetry be parallel? Not possible. Okay. So if there are two lines of symmetry, two lines of symmetry are there, then the intersection is center of mass because it should lie on both. <laughs> Got it? Now there are few regular shape objects for which you don't need to break your head where is a center of mass. For example, this television, where the center of mass will be if mass is uniformly distributed? You draw diagonal that and that. Line of symmetry is there, right? Diagonal intersection of the two diagonals or intersection of this line and that line. Okay? Very simple. So, just tell, tell me where will be the uh, center of mass for this? Suppose this is made up of steel, the half of it and half of it is made up of wood. Where the center of mass will be? Is there a line of symmetry? Is this a line of symmetry? Is this? So center of mass will be somewhere here and it will be somewhere on this side. Getting it? So do not look at the geometrical shape to find out line of symmetry. You should look at the distribution of mass. Okay? Okay? The center of mass of a ring will be where? Center. Center of mass of sphere, center. Okay? Center along the axis at the center. And uh, rod, the center of the rod. So, like that. It's a commonsensical thing. Okay? For a cube, intersection of diagonals. Okay? Rhombus, again, intersection of diagonals. Parallelogram again. Okay. Please write down center of mass for a continuous distribution of mass. Suppose I have to find out the center of mass of some object which is not regular shape and size. Okay? Then I don't, then I can't apply the formula summation of m1, x1 because there will be infinite particles and also there will not be any line of symmetry to help me out. Okay? Then how to find the center of mass location? The summation will get transformed into integral time. Okay? And this is how it will happen. So x center of mass is summation of mi xi divided by summation of mi. Okay? Now I am saying that suppose there is a big mass 
Okay, irregular shape object. Here up. This big mass is there, irregular shape and size. I'll assume that the entire big object is made up of small, small masses of mass dm. dm is the small mass and its location is x. The location of dm is x. So the numerator will become what? Integral of x dm divided by integral of dm. Summation will get transformed into integral. Integration is what? Summation only. Any doubts? Okay. Now can you integrate this just like that? What is the problem? Why I cannot integrate this? So, first of all, I don't know the limits. Upper limit, lower limit, I don't know. Second, there are two variables, x and dn. Okay, so how do I get to know these two things, limit and x as a function of m or m as a function of x? For a particular situation only. For a given scenario, I will get to know what is the limit for that scenario and for that scenario, what is the relation between m and x. But right now, this is the formula. It is like force is equal to mass and acceleration. You can't solve it because you don't know what kind of forces are being applied. Okay? Similarly here, this is a formula which you have to solve for different different objects. Any doubts? No? Okay, now do one thing. Take a uh, rod. This is a uniform mass distribution rod. Mass is m, length is l. Okay? Find out its center of mass using this formula. You, we know that center of mass will be l by 2. We know that. Prove it. Using that integral formula, prove it.
So the location, location of DM is what? X. Fine. Now, do I know DM in terms of X or DX? The entire length L has mass M. So DX length will have what mass? M by L into DX. So this is my DM. So I have got DM in terms of DX. Okay? Fine. This is uh, this is what you have to do regularly. As in, it is not something which will only come once and the different scenario, a different way of doing it. This is the way of doing the problems and this you have to do again and again. So better to understand once and then try to replicate it in the next scenario. Okay? And yes, in the school exams, they will not ask you to integrate and find out the center of mass locations, but they expect you to do in all the boundary exams. Fine, so you should know this. And anyway, if you know only things which everybody else is knowing, you are no good. You are at that level only. So 15 lakh people write the exam, your rhyme will also be 5-6 lakhs. Right? Because you have not learned something which we, which others don't know. So why your rank will be better than them? Isn't it? So you should pay attention here. You should know some things which others don't know. And there is nothing very complicated here. So integral of x dm will become what? Integral of x m by l into dx divided by integral dm is what? Total mass m only. So this is my x center of mass. My limits of integral will be what? From 0 to L. X is going from here to here. It's the masses are distributed starting from here till there. Okay? Now try finding out the answer quickly. M and M goes away. 1 by L comes out of integral. It is constant. 0 to L. X dx. X dx integral is what? x square by 2, 0 to L are the limits, so you get L by 2. L square by 2 will come and 1 L will get cancelled, so L by 2. Got it? Fine? Not outside. Right? Suppose you have you have a rod of length L. Okay? Mass per unit length is given by this x by L kg per meter. Fine. You need to find center of mass of this rod now. Will it be center of the rod? No, mass per unit length is increasing. So where, which side it will be? Right hand side or left hand side? Right. right hand side. Okay. So your x starts from here, left hand side. Find out where it will be.
exact center. Answer has to be more than L by 2, otherwise the answer is wrong. Can you tell me, is there a line of symmetry here? 
vertical, there is vertical line of symmetry. So, your center of mass will lie along this line. Okay. So, you don't need to find the x coordinate. You can say this is my y coordinate and this is my x coordinate. So, you just need to find out what is the y coordinate of center of mass. Try doing it. The method is similar. 